Okay, now I'm back again. So now I'm on my SM58. Um, continuing my test. Got some important stuff here. Um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to run through some of my mics and test them. And I've got the headset on now so that I can hear what it sounds like. I can hear the signal coming out of my check one, two, check. Hello, check, check, check. Hello, check. I have to have it. It's too loud for me. That's what I'm trying to turn it down a little bit. But. Okay, now this is the uh, Shure SM. What's in my SM? Whoops. What? One in desktop. It is a Shure 579SB vocal mic, and I have never been able to, it doesn't work. So, um, let me uh, plug that in. You can hear what I'm doing there because uh, of my 58 I've been talking on. Okay, now let's just go back to the uh, desktop stream so you can see better. Okay, now, um, turn. See, you get nothing. It's got a switch on it. You can turn it on and off. The, it's like dead in a door now. Usually mics don't just, most of the time they don't just go dead unless the element goes out, which I wouldn't have thought of, you know, a sure mic would do that. Um. Now on this mic, I went ahead and turned that channel down. You, I had it loose a little ago. Let's see. There we go. This mic kind of splits right in half. <coughs> and uh, I've already done this a little ago and checked the wiring, and it looks fine. Yeah. Oh, I can hear something. Okay, so the switch works. There you go. That's a good, quick way to test the switch. So I'm guessing that the element's actually bad in this thing. The solders look perfect. The uh, wiring looks good, you know. I mean, now see, that's why I'm, I'm wiggling it around and everything with it open. Because if the wires, I mean, they shouldn't ever get any stress on them unless you had a bad, uh, unless this had come loose, the, the, the connector, your male connector. You, you think it's female because it's in a hole, but it's actually those are male, and these are female here. But uh, it's going to hurt my ears if I get a pop. I've got the headset on. Okay. Um, yeah, if your wires, you know, that's the most common thing is your wiring going bad cables and stuff or wiring inside of there's a piece of hair or something on here wiring inside of a uh, banging into my mic stand <coughs> wiring inside of uh, s s it, you know you wouldn't expect it it doesn't get strain on it so you wouldn't expect it to uh, move my keyboard I, I don't have a good place to kind of set the there we go. It gets too low for the camera. Okay, yeah, so. But yeah, you can hear that now, can't you? If I turn the switch off, it quits. So the switch is working. I'm going to quit. Quit making a move. There we go. Check one, two. Check one, two. Now I've got it up. Check one, two. Check, 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 check. See, that's not. You can't tell. I can't tell because I'm talking into another mic. Of course, I can turn it down. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the 58. Okay, so I had the channel up all the way, and you heard that little bit of hiss. But uh, well, the wires were okay, and I'll end up breaking them. So... Hmm. That's an interesting idea I just had. I have a. I'm going to put this back together here. Since I'm going to go backwards, 
I'm going to twist it backwards a little bit, and then by the time it's screwed in there, it should be not twisted too bad. <coughs> now I have, show it to you. I originally had five Shure SM58s that I had bought. I was, talk I was talking in my other video. I inherited these 257s, a 58, and some assorted mics that the rest of them don't work. This one, <coughs> this is one of my original 58s, <coughs> and I was doing sound for bands. It's mounted with PVC pipe. I was going to use it, thinking I'd use it for a drum. <coughs> <coughs> kick drum mic, stick it way up in the kick drum, but um, I never really did it much. Um, s kick drums, if, if they have a hole uh, for the mic to go into, uh, it Especially the kind of bands I did, it, it really made a good sound if you could stick it like way, you know, way up in there, just almost back to the back back uh, skin of where the where the striker hit it. You know, but anyway, um, <coughs> the kid was singing on this mic when it was whole, and he started swinging it around and around on the cable. And he he let it go about. He was up on a stage and it was brick brick walls on either side of that stage, and he let go a fifteen foot of cable. And at 20, he kept letting out a little more, a little more, and then it hit the wall and it shattered, I think, shattered the whole um, body of the mic. I've never seen that happen before or since. And uh, <coughs> so that's how come it ended up being, the, the head was good, it works just fine. Uh, but I haven't ever used it much since I put it on here because uh, uh, it kind of, it looks goofy, <laughs> it looks goofy and it's awkward. Actually, I pulled it out one time I was showing a kid thought it was cool singing wanted to sing on it but I said well I'd let you but this right here didn't stay together good uh, I glued it actually what I did is I tried to glue everything together and then this screws apart so we could work on it and this here oh that's what it was this part here didn't stick good I had to heat that collar up to get it to fit in there and then I glued it and it's tight now I re-glued it I don't know I probably I think I used PVC glue it originally Last time I glued it, I don't remember what I used, but it worked really good. I might have used, I don't know, epoxy or something. But it's on there good now. Th this end ended up uh, coming loose, though. I've got tape around it. This would just fall. And, uh, and so anyway, um, this mic <coughs> works perfectly. Sounds just like any other 58. Uh, and that, that's where the sound... I always thought, wondered, you know, I thought, well, I'm going to switch over. Oh, check one, two, check one, two. But, yeah, see, you get a lot of noise out of that pipe. But uh, this other one's off. But, yeah, it's no good for, um, I don't know what it would have, I've tested it a few times in a drum, and I don't know that it would be, I mean, you're definitely picking up a lot of sound. I mean, time a drum got hit but yeah, I, don't, I didn't use it enough to know if I liked it or not but it's definitely not good for a handheld mic I did have stuck it on recently I stuck it on a mic stand that wasn't a boom stand and it makes a boom for you <laughs> so <laughs> as long as you didn't touch it you were okay but uh, I'll get go back to the other mic now alright now um, of course I left the gain like it was that I had set it it's quite higher on channel 2 I uh, can tell there's some difference in the sound. Let's see. Let's do that again. Oh, let's let's see. We'll try phase testing. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Hello. Check, 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 check. So I was in my previous video. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, 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 check. There we go. Check. I'll come a little further apart. Check one, two, one, two. Check one, two. Check. Check one two one two one two check one two check hello check hello check hello check. Okay, so there's stereo mic. Um, yeah, I think they sound pretty much the same. You can tell. I can hear. I mean, when I move my head, though, I can uh, hear a little difference there. I am recording in stereo, so you would hear that stereo. Like I could pull one over to the right, one over to the left. You can pan them. Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Check. Pan them as wide as you can pan them. Check one, two. Check one, two. 
Check one, two, check, 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 check. I can't really. I got this headphones on so I can tell, but check one, two, check one, two. Yeah, I think you can tell the difference here. But um, anyway, <coughs> turn that back down now. Okay, so you know, this is <laughs> that's why I don't. I've just left it together, even though I don't hardly ever use it. Uh, what I'd really like to do is take this head out of here, out of the little, this part too, even, or maybe use this part, but I'd like to make me a headset, SM58. But, oh, I forgot. Well, it's not really going to make any difference. Well, let's do it. I'm going to take this little windscreen off of here. I just don't want to rip it or anything. They're a little tricky to get on and off. Well, let's just leave it on there. I don't want to rip a hole in it or something. But what I was thinking is, if that, I think maybe that inside of there, that uh, actual mic, that head, mic head, um, transducer, whatever. Well, yeah, I think they really are transducers. But anyway, uh, the mic head might fit in here, and uh, it just might fit in there, and then. That would be okay. It wouldn't be bad. It has to have its own. It's got its own special sized uh, clip, mic clip, that you put on the mic stand. And it's very light. It's lighter than a 58, I believe. Uh, yeah, I might. You know, that's something I could do. Uh, all I'd have to do is. Uh, I know that the switch works now. So all I'd have to do is desolder those connect those wires in there. And hook this one into there, and then if it didn't work, I would know that there's something wrong with that wiring, you know, between, it, between the switch and the. Well, but I did get noise. Well, I got noise, but I didn't get. But I think the fact that I got noise when I touched those, what I did was short it out with my finger, you know. Um, I got noise, so that means that there's connection, unless you know, like two of them work and one of them doesn't, or something. Uh, but uh, I don't know how that fits. I guess if I'm going to sit here, and, I mean, I've been wanting, okay, I'll, there we go. It's not that hard to do. Okay, let's see. Let's just see if we can get that. I think it'll come off pretty easy. Oh, no, it's tight. Oh, it's so tight, I can't get it off of there. So the mic head screws off right about there. And uh, I don't know why it's so tight. I've had it on and off. It must have uh, oxidized a little bit because this is aluminum. It's not going to actually rust like steel. This is steel. It will rust. Got rust on it right now. They get rusty because when you use them a lot, there's a lot of spit goes into these things. And uh, there's, I've seen, I've seen people in videos. I never saw anybody did. If they did, I'd knock them upside the head and they'd stick the mic in a pier. Thinking they're sterilizing it, you know. Okay, I mean, I don't blame anybody for not wanting to, you know, use a mic, get get the spit on their mouth from the last person that sang ahead of them. But uh, I knew one guy who was in a band. He would he bring his own mic and use his own mic. I didn't mind. I didn't. He asked me if I minded. Well, I don't care. <laughs> and his mic he had was a SM, a Beta 58. It's a lot better mic anyway. So, <coughs> but uh, yeah, I'll have to. When I get serious about it. <coughs> see yeah that diameter of the actual holder looks to be about the same if I can get them up next to each other yeah so I think that that head would fit in the in this one so that might be and I haven't really got the stuff I need to make of course a real it's an awful big mic head to be using for a headset anyway but you could use a 58 head to make that off to the side on a on a boom, on a headset boom. It would work fine. <coughs> but uh, on the 57, it's not omnidirectional. It's more. It's uh, more directional, so uh, it wouldn't work so well on something like that. But um, hmm. yeah, there's something. I think that mic head must be bad. That's all I can figure. So, yep, put this back in its bag. 
I got enough bags for all the mics. They did not come with bags, but well, I had five. Like I said, uh, this this would be number five, I guess you could say, of the five I originally had. And I gave away four of them and kept this one uh, <coughs> because you know, they wouldn't really know what to. Do. They wouldn't have any use for it anyway. <coughs> oh, but, uh, and then later I inherited these. So, well, I knew I was going to get these when I did it. So I wasn't being <laughs> all that. <laughs> Well, I'd say I wasn't uh, running. I, I wasn't going to go without mics <laughs> completely. I wasn't planning on it. I knew I was getting these others. So uh, actually, I might have got these new, these before I gave those others away. Can't remember. <coughs> so um, now 157 I already talked on. So I'm just going to go through each mic that I have that works. Okay, now. Okay, <coughs> let's do that phase testing one. All right, let's see, check one. Oh, let's just put that up. I can get the volume right. Check one, two, check one, two, check, check. Hello, check. Check one, two, check one, two, check, 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 check. Hello, check, check. Hello, okay, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Hello, hey, this is Don. I'm checking my microphone. Hello, hey, hey, hey. Hello, hey, hello, hey, 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 hey. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, hello. Hello, hello there. Hello there. Hello there. 57s are famously good down lower, you know, the 40 hertz, and these go to 50 hertz. So I'm trying to see, yeah, hello. People do that a lot. They'll get really close to 57 and talk like I'm a radio announcer. Hello, I'm a radio announcer. I'm not a radio announcer. Oh, yes, I am. Now I'm not a radio announcer. Oh, stop doing that. <coughs> okay, hello. Hello, so they're in phase. Okay. <coughs> Whoops. That's kind of an interesting new thing for me. I never knew how to do that. I read it in the manual. Imagine that. <coughs> now, here's something. Before I ever got my 58s, when I didn't have enough money <coughs> to buy a real 58, I bought this. This is a PG-48, a short PG-48, and it has a switch. And uh, it's the, it was 50 bucks. And, a, and when I bought my mics not too long after I got this, my 58s, they were $99 each with a mic cord. I think this came with a mic cord. Yeah, it did. 50 bucks with a mic cord. And it's okay, but boy, you can tell the difference. Check one, two, check one, two, check, 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 check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Check. All right in there. <coughs> okay. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> My voice is no good. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so um, check one, two. Hello, hey. Hello, hey. It's brighter, but it's sharp, too sharp. Hello, check. Hello, check. <coughs> so, but they're in phase. And yes, it has a switch. It has a switch. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay. It works just fine. I mean, of course, I bought it new. And it's in really good shape because I didn't use it much. What I really bought it for was to use for a talkback mic. I could just uh, plug this into an ch extra channel on the board and just is only go not go to the house, just go to the monitor so I could talk back to the band when I was doing the sound check. And I could use that switch to quickly turn it on and off. Um, <coughs> you know, instead of having to run that slider up and down. Usually was mixing in a somewhat dark room. And a lot of times you would uh, not really be able to. Uh, you might grab the, I might grab, I, I always had a little bit of trouble seeing good, so I might, you know, I could grab that switch and not, I, once I got my, everything set, I wouldn't mess with it anymore than I had to, all my channels and everything. Because uh, I didn't want to mess it up during the show. <coughs> so, anyway. Um, I've been through all my other mics. enough times <coughs> that I don't think there's any 
use in uh, plugging any of the others in. Before I started doing this, that's kind of what got me going with this. I got out this. Um, this is one of the ones I inherited. This is an, a wired lapel mic, and it looked like a real good one. I thought it might have been a Sure or something, but there's no label on it or anything. It's a high impedance. It's not a low impedance. And uh, <coughs> it never worked. And I tried to get it, well, I, I tried to get it apart. I thought it screwed apart like a normal mic. And now, and it's this is the softest aluminum I've ever seen. I've got the parts tape to it. What all that is, but uh, <coughs> finally figured out by accident. I squeezed it too hard, got it out of shape, and then the front started popping off and off. And then I saw it in there. It's a keeper ring in there. So if I wouldn't have got it all out of shape, I could have taken. It's a plastic keeper ring. If I would have, I do have it off now. If I'd have took that keeper ring off, then I could have uh, just you just shove it through back shove it through there and I got it to come up all the way even to the top but I couldn't get it out because I burgered it up somehow and I tried to deburr it what the burrs I made on it and tried to get it out of that and I finally thought why mess with that what you know it doesn't even work let's see now if you plug that in there it won't do anything check one two check one two check check whoops oh Hmm. Yeah, it must be a must be a dead uh, mic head, I guess. I mean, it's never done anything but that. I don't remember that it popped before like that. But it probably did. If I was careful not to, <laughs> I think there's a little hole in the middle of it there. Little hole in the middle. I don't know if I can get it to work really soon or not. Now you can kind of see it. Little hole in the middle. That's where the, the mic diaphragm is. And uh, I did stick something in there and touch it, and it immediately, I guess it scratched some film off of it or something. But uh, so it was beautiful uh, polished aluminum, and now it's just totally destroyed. In fact, you can see it. Now. What I do here, but I don't think all it's doing is showing it in my face. Man, that's not. I can't. I can't. Uh, it's like doing things in a mirror. I can't get it lined up. <coughs> so anyway. I always wanted this to work. Uh, of course, now I have me a wire. I have a wireless lapel now by using a uh, wired lapel mic plugged into my phone and then sending the audio over the Wi-Fi. So I can uh, I just do that all the time now. I bought one for, for ninety nine. You're like just for ten bucks uh, on Amazon. And it works just fine. It has a decent sound. It's not as good as a fifty eight, but it's fine. I can hear. And these headphones, let me get this pad down. Get these headphones off. They're, they're, they bother my, they make my ears sweat, start hurting my head quickly. They, uh, one reason I had them on so I could hear my testing, know what's going on. <coughs> but wow, I can't stand that for long. I'm not one who, and when I, when I'm, I used to sing, uh, I never really sung much in public, but I did some recording and stuff. And, uh, Shoot, I don't even hardly talk much anymore. I can't even, like I was trying to just do a little sound test singing and I couldn't do it. My voice is so raspy. But uh, <coughs> I uh, I do, what I was trying to say is I do need monitors. Or, um, like real regular stage monitors I like for singing with. But uh, headphones, I, I just can't really stand it. And I used headphones a lot when I was recording. I had a friend that did all the musical. I can't play any instruments, and he played all the music. And Henry did the recording. He had a recording studio set up in his house. And I would have to wear the headphones in. And boy, my, my head would just be blown away by the time we were done because I had to listen to the guitar, the drums, myself, you know, everything. 
Myself is too loud right now, but myself was not was nothing compared to all the instruments. Because I didn't have, I couldn't reach up there where I was at. I couldn't reach up there and turn it up or down. I <coughs> have to ask him. I couldn't ask him to do it while he was playing. You know, I just had to deal with it. And what little bit I did sing in a live situation, uh, then monitor I really wanted. You know, I really needed it. But um, stage monitors I like. <laughs> but and I, I see people. I notice that uh, I always pay attention to the production. I can't help it, you know, because I'm used to mixed sound. When I watch uh, live, people singing live, uh, everybody uses those in-ear monitors now. And I mean, they are constantly filling with those things and messing with the volume. And they'll, they bought them so much, they'll take them out, and you'll see they'll have one in and one out hanging on their shirt, you know, hanging on their shoulder. And... Uh, Really, you know, if you're on a stage singing, if the instruments aren't loud, you can hear yourself well enough to sing. It's the instruments, they drown you out. You can't hear yourself inside your own head, and then uh, you need that's what makes you end up needing the inner the uh, monitor. You can. I've done it. You can, you know, do the little trick of closing up your ear. Um, either put your finger in your ear or push the push it like that hear yourself or go like this this works better go like this or like that i think yeah like that'll catch more of your own voice oh yeah catch it i can hear it i actually saw a product for doing that with uh, some headphones that had little things coming out to catch your sound i saw a video on youtube not too long ago of a guy saying how wonderful he didn't sell them he just found them and he thought they were great <laughs> they look so crazy uh, uh, but i guess he was kind of like me he doesn't want he can't stand too much loud noise in his ears, you know. And me, I mix sound for punk bands and metal bands, Christian rock bands, Christian punk, Christian metal bands for years. And I really just did, you know, it happened just like they warned you, you know. I've damaged my ears, and now I can't stand loud noise. I can't stand. I can barely listen to music anymore. I have to turn it down so long I can't hear it because uh, it hurts and irritates me. It actually physically hurts my ears. So I messed up <coughs> doing that too many years. <coughs> so um, <coughs> you kids, don't pl don't listen to that uh, loud music too mu too long. You're gonna damage your ears, and you'll be sorry when you get old. And uh, from what I've always heard, I never did uh, never did use earphones a lot. Uh, but you know, they uh, they say that these earbuds that that are really high powered earbuds, they can really damage your ears too. And people use them. So you get the con you get, I imagine you get the the you get the volume the de decibel levels that you, of a live concert in in your own personal ear there so I can imagine it would damage your ears. So <coughs> um, there you go. I've tested them out. I'm curious about a couple of those other old mics since I have all this out. I know that, um, well, I have notes. I wrote I wrote them my sticky notes and stuck them in the bag with them so I wouldn't, because I can't remember anything, so that I would know what's up next time. This whole thing, <laughs> that's, a, that's a realistic mic, one of the mics I got. It's all rusty, and uh, it's wire. It's got a um, balanced quarter inch on it, and... Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. Oh, I don't have my headset on. Okay, now, let's see. Hello, chick. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to, I don't even care if I can talk on it. Oh, check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check. Hello, chick. Hey, check one, two. Check, 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 check. Guess if I gave it a lot of gain, it would work. Check. Hello, check. Hey, check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Check one, two. Check, check. It's a pretty crappy mic. It does work. I didn't think it worked. 
it's not worth using. Check one, two, check, check, hello, check. What would you do with something like that? I don't remember where I had my game. I was thinking I actually did use it for something at one point because it would work. I think it may have a balanced cable on it, but I don't know that it's really a balanced signal. I think it might be a high impedance line. Well, if it was, it wouldn't be so, need so much gain, though. Yeah, I thought about using one of these, but that's such a crappy looking uh, handle and everything. And, and I mean, it's nasty looking. Uh, and these, I think I've already tried that. <coughs> the uh, windscreen, yeah, it's completely different than the Sure SM58. Uh, I thought about trying to screw that on there. But it's a different size. It wouldn't. It wouldn't fit on there. It, it cause it's it's way different. Yeah, there's a my there's a mic element right there. That's kind of what they generally look like. Uh, <coughs> this is plastic. <coughs> the SM58s. Uh, the, the one I was looking at that lapel mic. Actually, I don't know what brand that is. It could be a realistic. It's. Uh <coughs> Like it might have been aluminum or something because it was silver. Let's see what I wrote in here. Bad mic, old realistic quarter inch TRS connector, switch may be bad. Oh, so maybe it cuts in and out. Kind of cuts in and out in both positions. Okay, so that's what I have on there. So it's not really usable. Uh, it didn't cut in. Well, I didn't switch this. It didn't cut in and out just now. It just uh, needed lots of gain in it. It still didn't sound. But I had so much gain it was hissing. So it's probably just uh, about wore out. Because um, that's all I ever had when I was a kid. <coughs> <coughs> I was a kid and <coughs> young adult. <coughs> was, you know, cheap. <coughs> Realistic mics and stuff. Let's see, I had, uh, let's see, what did I have? I don't remember what brand they were now. I did have some, um, might have been Realistics, but they were, they were high impedance mics. I had bought two of them. When I first started mixing sound, I had a PBXR800 sound system, and uh, I bought a couple of mics. I didn't know anything, you know, I didn't know the difference, high and low impedance. This nice uh, fellows at a music store taught, taught me some of that stuff. Yeah, but I got the uh, other ones because you could get a higher gain out of the low high impedance, but you couldn't uh, you couldn't go any further than about 25 feet or 30 feet of mic cable without losing lots and lots of signal uh, strength. <coughs> this was a Radio Shack, so anyway, they were actually decent sounding mics, or at least uh, better than anything I'd had before. But that was before I got into SM58s and stuff. So this one. It says made in the USA, patented highball. This is a highball. That's what these call them, highball mics. Radio Shack Corporation dual impedance. This says dual impedance. So I don't know. I guess maybe it tries to give whatever type of signal your device is looking for. <coughs> Let me get the cable here. I think this one doesn't work at all. Has a switch on it. Uh, there's a little spot where you can feel on the, but I can't ever feel it. It's not big enough. <coughs> Let me see. There we go. Put that back. I think I had it at about halfway. That's a good starting point anyway. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Hello, check. It works. Hello, check. Hey, 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 hey. Well, I'll be there. I thought that thing didn't work. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check. Hello, check. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. <coughs> I used to have a high voice. Hello, hello. Check one two, check one two, check check hello check 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 hello check hello check hello check hello check hello check hello check huh 
Check one, two, one, two, three. Whoa, hello, 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 hello. No, it doesn't sound all that bad, does it? Check one, two. Of course, I am going through all my effects on my VGAM, too, to help things all that. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, but they're both using the same effects. Because my main output goes out of my mixer to my VM, which has a noise gate, a compressor, and a tube amp emulator. Check one. Hello, world. Stereo miking, stereo miking, stereo miking, stereo miking, stereo miking. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Definitely much warmer on the 58. Hello, hello. But it works. <coughs> check one, two, one, two. Check, 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 check. Check one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Hello, hello, hello. Well, it works. It works fine. No problems. Why did I think? Maybe it, uh, and I don't, I do have phantom power on this mixer, but it's not turned on. So I knew it wasn't, it didn't need phantom power. Maybe it just didn't work on my V amp. Huh? Go look at my, go look at my, uh, turn it off. <coughs> look at my notes to self here. Well, that's good. So that's what I'm thinking. I've, I've left all my mics in my mic case. My mic case, it's an old green uh, 70s suitcase. I've got mic cords, guitar cords, and uh, mics in there. Anyway, I was thinking I should take out the ones that don't work because I look at them and, I, well, for one thing, I have to keep o I always open them. Oh, that one don't work. Uh, but I for, well, I finally started writing notes for myself that uh, realistic won't work. On the VMP2 gives weak signal and noise. Maybe good says dual impedance. Okay, so I'm just going to add to that note. Works fine on Behringer 802 board. How do you spell Behringer? <coughs> um, well, I'm just going to. Oh, there we go. B E H R I N G E R. <laughs> okay, cool. <coughs> I mean, if I ever was in a situation where, uh, You know, I needed an extra micro bed. That's usable. I mean, especially if all you're doing is talking. Um, you don't need, you know, you don't have quite as much of a requirement for a really good mic just to talk. Well, that's debatable, really. <coughs> because, uh, I mean, if you have good, some of the most annoying uh, things to listen to is uh, somebody talking on a bad mic, you know. And it's maybe more annoying than <laughs> singing on well, either way. So it works. Good. I think what I will do is what I've been thinking about doing. I'm going to find another place to put these crapped out mics. And uh, I hate to waste a court cable uh, mic bag on them, but it does keep things together, like the note to itself. And the one that I messed, well, it doesn't work anyway, but I sure hate that I messed it up, that lapel mic. I'm going to, at some point, I'm not going to do it today. I'm tired now. But I've been fiddling with things all day. Sorted out testing all my batteries. Messing with battery stuff. And then I started doing this. So anyway, uh, <coughs> this one, um, I might work harder at getting it apart because it could be just a bad wire in there or something. But, yeah, okay, so this one works. Well, that's cool. I guess I'm, I might not have actually tested this on the board before. I didn't have any note about the mixer. I did this a while back. I tested, I thought I tested all my mics on my mixer when I got it, but I might not have wanted to fool with all of them. So, <coughs> yeah, I was sitting there starting to organize my... <laughs> stuff <laughs> while well, I'm in the middle of making this video. Okay, um, <coughs> I'm going to leave my, and I'll turn that gain down on that channel since I'm not using it. I'm probably not going to use it anymore. <coughs> okay, um, so all my mics are in phase with each other. That's good. All, and the cable I'm using, of course, if I, 
is another cable I'd have to, to if I well, I, <clears throat> well if I can remember that I'll know just what to do if I hear something odd and if I ever do use two mics so I have way more mics than I have channels to use I can um, you could put a mic on these other channels you could use um, you could use a, uh, <coughs> a TRS quarter inch connector and you could actually one two three four five six you could actually put in six mics if you really needed to you just wouldn't have any gain on these two channels so what would happen you'd have to bring this channel and those two would be on the same channel you know the same control so uh, and it might lose you some volume too having two and one I mean, it might not because it's got it should have preamps on both three and four five and six separate preamps so uh, anyway I haven't done it <coughs> I do have a cable well I have a I have a high I have a low to high impedance adapter that would fit in there but that's a whole that would lose you some signal but if you had an actual balance I might have one balance cable XLR balance cable T, uh, you know XLR to a TR, uh, TRS anyway uh, if you did have that and you wanted to do it <coughs> you could um, pull that more so it's in the picture. Whoops, I didn't bring the cables are hung up on something. Okay, there we go. Now, um, you could you could have a XLR, XLR, and then you could do TRS, 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 TRS. Right now, I have just quarter on balance. These are line level signals, and that's what these channels are really made for. But you could get by with it, I believe. I used to do it on the bigger map. Uh, I've done it before on the bigger uh, <coughs> Behringer mixers back in the late 90s. I uh, helped some guy out. He had a band and he had his own mixers and stuff. And he had a Behringer 16 channel, I think. Might have been a 30, uh, 24 channel. But anyway, uh, that was the first time I really got to messing with Behringer's. I always used Mackies and a few, you know, like big Yamaha consoles and stuff But um, at churches and stuff. But. Uh, well, all my sound mixing for bands, I always use usually use the VLZ 16 channel, sometimes a 24 or 32 channel Mackie. <coughs> but uh, um, that's what I was used to, and, and I was really used to the wire, you know, the, the ins and outs on them and the wiring and everything, and how how to be wired for them. But anyway, on the Behringers, they had a bunch of those stereo channels, and and, and he needed all the he had a lot of members in his band, keyboards and all kinds of stuff, and so uh drum kit you know so anyway uh <coughs> i got him a, i was a dealer for horizon uh cables and, and music called they were the company was called horizon music it actually went out it got bought out when uh but i, I was i was selling uh, pro audio gear online and uh, starting in like 2002 till about 05 or something like that but i uh, couldn't i couldn't keep uh, i couldn't compete with the big boys once they got online uh, you know the Guitar Center and all that stuff, the musician's friend and all that. But um, I got him a bunch of cables at, at my price, you know, and so uh, got him all new XLRs uh, for how many channels he had, and then I got him TRS to XLR for each of those stereo channels. So <coughs> what I did is I'd set it up when I, I mixed for him once, and uh, well, I mixed for him once or twice at his practice studio, and then I went and mixed for him at his show once. But I set it up uh, and kind of showed them how you know how they could do it, and I uh, I kind of figured out what what you know what was best to put together on the same control, like say like you know like say you're two high toms, like if you had two mics, they could be on the same control, same channel, you know the same stereo channel. And you know some some channels need separate gains; they just can't get by with it. But some could be on the same thing keyboard you know uh, that uh, so what I had to do I had to use those as jumpers from his mixer to his snake because the snake wouldn't plug into all the channels on the board it was a regular XLR snake so what I did was uh, plug the XLR end into his snake cable and then plug the TR TRS end into the mo mixer where he needed it so uh it worked just fine, but I sure didn't like. I would. I, I did. I, I didn't. I thought to myself then. I mean, it was okay board. It was wasn't anything really wrong with it, 
I had some built-in effects and stuff, <clears throat> but uh, I certainly didn't like all that mess trying to figure out how to, you know, having to go around the block to wire it up and not having, you know, just a reg real 16-channel board or whatever. It might have been a 24-channel, but I think maybe his was a 24-channel because I remember he had a lot of channels he was using. But anyway, if um, uh, those Behringers still to this day, you know, they don't. You get a 16-channel Behringer. It's not a real 16-channel board. You don't have 16 mono channels. You've got a bunch of... You've got like four. I think they've got to where it's like four stereo channels. So those are unusable other than going around the block like I was just talking about for uh, trying to mix a live band and everything. So <clears throat> I mean, usually you have one music source back... You know, we always use CD players back then, sometimes a tape, but you mostly always a CD player. Sometimes... You might actually need a tape and a CD, but you just you just use the last two to four channels on the board, you know, or however you want to do it, the first ones or whatever. But um, I always use the last ones right next to the mains for the music inputs. And uh, <coughs> you didn't, I mean, I really didn't have any. It was, I just, it was okay. I mean, it's okay to have a stereo channel. But it's just as easy to grab the sliders when you have sliders. Now, on these kind of boards... Uh, I got this because it's cheap, but I really don't like boards with knobs. I like sliders. But you just grab your two fingers and slide it up, slide them down. You know, there's no big deal. You don't need stereo channels so that are control. You know, two channels controlled by one one knob or one slider. It does make them more compact. I mean, a six-channel board would have been twice. A normal six-channel board would have been twice as wide as this. So if you really need something compact. That's a design that could definitely give you save some space, and in my situation here, it works out good because I got it because I had. Well, this cost what was it sixty nine dollars fifty nine dollars I think, uh, and I looked at all the brands and and the Mackies were you know seventy nine dollars or something you know, and actually I have to say there was a few more features on the Behringer that the Mackie didn't have and it cost more so. You know, <coughs> and Mackie was when it first came out. I started using them when they fir first year they came out. Uh, my friends that owned a sound company bought bought you know some Mackie stuff, and uh, I've got what do you call it? not hangnails but cuticles sticking up. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> that's what I learned uh, learned pro mixing gear on, and it was pro quality. And now it's it's like everything else, you know. You might just you, when you read the reviews on it, today's Mackie gear, just as many complaints with with bad quality as with any other brand. Behringer, uh, when Behringer first got to be a big deal, <coughs> got to be in the in the radar, my radar, back in the mid to late nineties, late mid to late nineties, um, they were really uh, well. Some you'd hear about you know problems with them and breaking and stuff, but for the most part, they were uh, they tried to do a good quality because they wanted to compete with Mackie. Uh, but <clears throat> so what they generally did was a little bit cheaper and a few more uh, features, and they're kind of still doing that. But you re you re read do read more bad reviews. When I was looking, I really read every brand out there, and you did read more bad reviews. It's kind of like hit and miss, kind of like roll throwing the dice. You know whether or not you're going to get a good Mac uh, Behringer board. Mackie board is a lot less. I started to try to throw out percentages, but I'd just be kind of making stuff up. I can see it in my head, but explaining it is kind of hard. That's what, you know, what I read and video. I watched lots of videos and stuff too, because I knew things had changed a lot since you know '99, and uh, I've 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 kept up, over, you know, somewhat with the gear and what's been going on with it, but I haven't had any or used it much at all since. Anyway, <clears throat> and I have this, this V-Amp 2. It's a, really a guitar effects, but it actually does, in the instructions, it tells you how to set it up to use it as a vocal effects. And uh, it's some of the earlier, let's see, when did this? I think this, I got this in 02 or 04 or something like that. And uh, I, I, looked, I looked up my, <laughs> I found my receipt. And I saw when it was bought, but you know, but I forgot. But so, uh, 
it's um, some of the earlier effects, Behringer effects, and they don't sound quite as good as uh, the newer ones uh, that were on that board I was talking about. That was, well, no, that's backwards because that board was actually older than this. It might not have been in the late 90s. It might have been in the early 2000s whenever I was uh, helping that guy. Might have been around the same time as this. But anyway, the Behringer effects cannot do these. Now, I don't know about the newer ones. They, they say that they, they say they're good, and you, you read that they're good and stuff. But and I, I'm not just talking about the spiel that, you know, Behringer themselves writes out. But, um, and, heck, you can find, like I found a bunch of videos on uh, guys with their real guitar players. I can't, I've got a guitar, but I can't play. I play with a guitar. Um I went through every effect on it and, you know, showed you what it sounded like and how to set it, a little bit about how to set it and stuff. It's a complicated little device, I'll tell you that. I, uh, I, uh, when I got it, I got it with the idea in mind that I would use it for playing around with my guitar, but mostly I wanted to use it for a vocal effect because it was a really good price and it would kill two birds with one stone. And uh, I actually had it for 10 years before I ever... Really got it down and serious and figured out how to hook it up. I just took, I've had it for eight months, a year, set up like this to use for my mind. It stayed under the bed for 10 years because I just, every time I tried to read those instructions and figure out how to do it, I just could, couldn't wrap my head around it. And uh, and that's not because, <clears throat> that sounds funny probably, somebody that says they make sound for bands, well, uh, with my health problems, my mind doesn't work good anymore at all. Uh, back when I was younger, I was really good at technical stuff and understanding it and everything. And I, I never, uh, usually, uh, what I did was I'd go help people that were experienced and learn from them. You know, I, I did basically intern programs. You know, I'd just go help them for free and learn by doing and uh, by asking questions. <coughs> so um, I was all I was. I am still always. I love learning. I still love learning to this day. My favorite kind of video is to watch your how-to videos and you know, on YouTube and stuff. So uh, I constantly find new things to learn about. I don't remember most of it anymore, but I still love doing it. Still love finding out new things. So um, let's see. When I'm not monitoring my sound, I'm worried that it's not working. But I tell you what, it sure is a lot easier on the ears. <coughs> but if you need to know what your sound is like, then uh, <coughs> you can uh, figure out. I'll start to say I was talk about it, but no, I won't. There's an earphone out, and uh, yeah, it says phones. I took that out and put it back into oh to the tape in on the board, and then I just used the phone, the phone volume, the earphones volume there to. Uh, Turn that all the way down so that I don't end up having some strange feedback that I don't know what's happening. I always keep all the channels down that you're not using. <coughs> you don't want to get any. Because even if you don't have something plugged in, you might get a little uh, line noise, like say if you've got a cable plugged in. And I, most of these cables I'll leave them plugged in all the time. This uh, extra mic cable I don't normally leave plugged in. but uh, And I probably will put it away, put it back in my case and put it away because... This mic here is the only one I normally use. This one or the uh, the uh, lapel mic plugged into my phone is a wireless mic. Those are the two I use the most. I've actually never had an occasion to use the other mics in any other thing other than one of these making a little test, doing a test, you know, to, to make them. I just go ahead and make a video because why not, you know. I mean, I'm using the computer to do the test. I mean, I could do a test with... I don't even have to have the. I could just not even have the computer running if I wanted to test everything with my headphones, you know, just like that. But I like having a record of it. I can, you know, I forget so much that I can go back and I can kind of skim through that video and, oh, okay, that's what I tested and yeah, that's how it works, you know. And I can, he I can actually hear in the video just, I should hear in the video just what I heard uh, through my headphones. And uh, what <coughs> if you have. Uh, you could just listen um, to, uh, I'm thinking, 
Did I fool myself? You got to pay attention or you'll fool yourself. You'll only be listening to the... Um okay, yeah, I've got it right. You'll, it, it, you, can, you can listen to the, the signal coming out of the board before it gets to the VM, and that will not get the v, what's the VM's doing to it. But, yeah, I remember hearing my compressor kicking around and stuff. Yeah, I've got it. What you do is you plug it into the tape in. You've got, let's see. That's not the right one. Okay, what do I have? Maybe it is. Let me look here. Oh, okay, yeah. I was looking at the I was looking at the colors and the age of the cables. I could tell by looking at them which ones are newer and older. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it comes out the phones into the tape input, and then I have. So then I have they could say two two TR two track instead of tape like they used to always say. Tape the tape input goes to control room, and the control room and phones. Uh, volume is as a together, same one. So, so it depends on how you punch the buttons on the board, and uh, how you have, and of course, how you have things plugged in as to what you get. So, I, I f it took me a little thinking to figure it and trial and error to figure it out. <coughs> but um, yeah, I can hear my signal. My signal goes to two places out of the VM. <coughs> the main output goes to my computer, and then my headphones. <coughs> goes into the back end of the board. See, it's coming through the board to the VAMP and out to the computer. Uh, and then the phones comes out back out of the VAMP back into the board. But I don't send it to the channels. If I did, I'd get horrible feedback. There is a button you can push, send, uh, send it to the mains. You wouldn't want to do that. You just send it to the control room. So you go in the ta tape input from the VAMP and then to the control room only. And so... Uh, and I could have listened to it through the control room outputs, but then you'd have to have a dual left and right, you know, mono left and right plug. I saw somebody doing that in a video. But uh, you can just plug it into the phones, and it works just, just the same. So, uh, <coughs> um, that's very helpful to monitor your actual signal, you know. It's the same, same signal I'm getting into the computer. So, because uh, when I first did it, I hadn't quite figured all the buttons out, and I was only getting, well, <coughs> I, I would only get what was coming off the board, and I wasn't getting what was coming out of the VM. Well, I didn't have it wired up that way. I hadn't, hadn't quite figured it out yet. So if you just if you don't have that all set up like that, and you just plug in a headphone, uh, then you will just, uh, and you have that button up, the one that's uh, the second one up there, then it will just be what you get off the board, which is pre-effects, you know. I'm getting post effects, which is what you need. That's what you really want. You want to monitor your, your final signal, you know, the, before it goes to your computer, your PA, or whatever it is you're doing. So, and that is a cool um, when you don't have, uh, you just have one effects unit. Then that's just, that is the I found the but really the best way to do it. Uh, because you could do an effects insert, you know, effects send, and then to the effects send to this, and then back to the board, and then you could use these effects controls on each one. But uh, what you will get is both of what they call a wet and a dry signal, and you will always get both. You could you could, you could increase with these uh, red knobs here. You could increase the wet signal, but you can't decrease the dry signal without decreasing your signal completely. So. Um, uh, you will, uh, and the whole point of using the compressor is to s shut down that, uh, you know, stop a distortion, to shut down the signal when it gets too loud. So if you get too close to the mic or anything at all happens, get too loud, the compressor will quench that signal, you know. And, uh, but if you have both, if you use the effects out, you know, effects in and then effects return, the, uh, to, to, to hook up your effects unit, then you're going to have both wet and dry signals. And all you can do is just turn up or down the wet signal. And you can turn up or down your dry signal, but, you you know, you're going to want to get, for recording on a computer, you need to get that set and leave it there. You don't want to be changing it. 
on your main mic anyway. I mean, I was changing it on my, doing my tests and all that, but normally you get it all set and you leave it. <coughs> and so that's uh, a kind of a, it seems like a back, door, back around the block way to do it, but it's actually very common in mixing. I learned it from other people that, you know, knew a lot about mixing. It's, uh, if you have a whole bunch of effects units, one for every channel, great. More power to you. You know, do it that way. But you can also do, well, this board doesn't have uh, channel inserts, but, uh, or main inserts, but there are most real uh, pro mixers have main channel, uh, channel insert on every channel and a main insert. And so uh, what, what, what we used to do is put our effects unit, sometimes we'd have two or three of them. So we would put some dedicated vocal effects on the vocal channels and then we'd have an overall complete you know fi main sig final signal compressor and gate noise gating compressor usually is what we would use and we'd do a main insert and uh, catch our signal we always mix in mono there's really no sense in trying to mix in uh, in uh, stereo in a live situation I mean all the people on the right side would hear one thing and all the people on the left side would hear something else and that would be no good so mono is really the best way to mix in a live situation Everybody, you're not going to have your whole crowd right in the center of that stereo cross cross over you know of the sound so uh, people are all the way from down on the stage to the back to the sides you know so mono is the best way uh to, to mix live <coughs> that's my my story and i'm sticking to it so anyway uh we would always use uh, if we if we could you know if we had it i've mixed in a lot of different ways with a lot of you know more or less equipment but uh, just do it. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing a main insert. I just had to wire. I d but it's day what I'm doing is a daisy chain. I go straight out, left and right monos, out to this with a stereo. This is actually an insert cable. It's plugged in in reverse. So left and right to the main. And then, uh, and then it's, this is taking look. This is looking for a stereo or a mono signal. It'll work either way. This uh, B amp on the input. So the input goes uh you know left and right then it's put together trs makes it stereo so that sends uh both sides and then uh and i just use uh i use a tube amp and a, a noise gate and a compressor and a little bit of not reverb but the actually opposite of reverb i'm, I'm stopping the reverb so that it sounds better for talking you know i can ch i've got i can switch you know i can there's some reverb i, I set that up in case i wanted to sing and then there's some these are all, these right here are guitar effects. They just sound funky. They're just weird. But um, I do have A and B set up as uh, vocal effects. A is for talking and B for singing. I haven't really done any singing, but thought I might try to record something one day, you know. But uh, and then the output is le uh, left and right mono. And it's another, that's an insert cable as well. And it goes around here to my computer and then I go use an adapter to go from quarter inch TRS to eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter um, into the computer. And so that's how I do that. So um, the mixer did, has helped. Uh, first, it took me a little while to get my adjustments because I was actually over, uh, too, uh, the, it was overdriving, the signal was overdriving. It was too hot coming in the V-amp and the compressor was Cutting, it was making noise. It'll make it whenever it has to clamp down real hard and fast, it'll make a little whoosh noise. And so I was hearing that. And if it gets uh, if your signal's too hot, you'll, it'll cut off part of it. You know, you can hear it. <coughs> and so it's an automatic compressor, you can't adjust it. You just turn the compressor on or turn it off. That's all you can do. And it's a decent automatic, though. I've used, uh, I've used, I learned on DBX manual compressors, you know, I, you, you learn how to set them. But I did also use some automatic, I think they were Behringer's, automatic compressors. No, they were uh, Lesis. And Lesis was not very good gear. I don't know if it's any better now, but it wasn't very good gear. It was bargain gear. It wasn't all that cheap, but it was a lot cheaper than all the other stuff. Anyway, I used some Lesis uh, automatic compressors. And uh, actually, you could, you could do them manual or automatic, and they didn't work very well on manual. But they, they did okay on automatic, so I ended up using them on automatic. But I used them on, uh, this was a, I used them on, uh, I actually got to pick out that system. I went to, 
I went I, I went to do sound for this um, this it was a dance club that did uh, downtown Fort Worth that did uh, uh, but they wanted to do Christian bands and the guy was a Christian that owned it and he wanted to do Christian bands and so we'd do bands first and then do the dance music and I didn't do that I, they had DJs you know scratch DJs with rec- roll records doing the music but so I would do the bands and anyway he I went to the guitar center with him and picked out everything he knew a guy that gave him a good deal and uh, of course he had a budget and so we had to get we got Yamaha cabinets crown and not crown and wanted crown amps we got uh, I forgot the name of the brand but anyway we got another a cheaper brand of uh, amps and then we got a, a, a VLZ Mackie a new one of the new VLZs in the late 90s it was a real nice one a little bit fancier than the older ones that I had been using and uh, we got those Alesis for the monitor monitor mix. We had two monitor mixes, so we had two. We had a two channel Alesis, or I think they were two separate half racks and quarter racks or something. Uh, automatic uh, compressors, and uh, then we had a DBX uh, stereo compressor for the house main house, and then we had uh, I think we had an Alesis uh, third octave EQ, thirty two channel EQ, and the house and um, think, think we had oh, wait a minute we might have had a lease of CQs for the monitors and then uh, 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 something else for the house it actually was what I liked but we, I know we didn't get that that was, that was expensive like 750 bucks just for you know for one of those the cheaper cheaper one cheaper model we might have had like a I don't know it could have been a DBX or something I think we did have, I think we had a, you know, a stereo EQ, and we used one channel for one monitor mix, one channel for the other monitor mix, and then, I don't remember now, I've forgotten, but anyway, I think, I, I know we had a house EQ, if we had a monitor EQs or not, I can't remember, we just about have to, we had to, or else I'd have never been able to use monitors in there, that thing was the most reflective room, long and skinny, and highly reflective, it was the hardest room I ever, about one of the hardest rooms I ever mixed in. And uh, so uh, <coughs> when you bought a rack, a rolling rack that you could put all the gear in it, and it was, it was a plastic, but it was nice, and you could lock it. And so you had the mixer in the top, and you took the lid off, and then down the front you had all the outboard gear. And it was pretty cool. <coughs> Those of the Yamaha cabinets weren't very good. They were rated. They were supposed to be – they were rated at twice what they'd take. They didn't take much. What were those amps? They're very com very common brand of amps. They're decent, but what they would do is um well they would distort a lot easier than crowns. I used crown I got to use crowns most of the time with my friends sound company gear. I, if I didn't work with for them, then I would borrow their gear. They'd let me borrow their gear to do a lot of the other shows I did. And so I was spoiled to use crown amps and Mackie mixers and stuff. And of course Yes, sure, SM58s and 57 mics is what we had until I got my own and I had some of my own. But um, I'll think of it later. But <clears throat> anyway, um, so now I have just a tiny little baby sound system in my room. No fancy gear anymore. But this, this 802 has been real good, this Baron 802. And I like my little B amp too. For what I'm doing here, for um, you know, recording to the computer, doing YouTube videos and stuff, desktop screencasts and all that, pretty good. And uh, thought about trying to use my lapel mic. I tried it. I didn't. Uh, before I go, I'm going to do that <clears throat> since I don't even have that phone on. My uh, lapel mic, as far as I know. It's for a phone, and uh, I keep, since I don't have my, let me turn that up, and I'll know when I'm getting too far away from my mic. Okay, it's for a phone. Let's plug it. It's plugged in there. The charger's not turned on, but it is plugged in. Tell that. Okay, so I'm not telling how much I moved around. That's one good thing about monitoring. You know when you get away from your mic. So I put in this bag here. I, uh, it's, you can wear it on your 
It's a, what do they call it? Wear it on your hip. <coughs> for cameras is what it's really for. Well, that's what my friend, my friend was a photographer, and that's what he used me for the day. So. Fanny pack, that's what they used to call them. Don't tell anybody I wear a fanny pack. Okay, so this phone, uh, I put it in this little, this is actually uh, the holder for a 3D, for the phone, for a 3D uh, headset, 3D uh, game, you know, 3D viewing headset. <coughs> and so I put the phone in there, and because of this long adapter that has, for it to work on my phone, it has to have that long adapter on there. I don't know why they didn't give you a right angle adapter, but they didn't. So anyway, um, it's it'll go, um, it'll work with more than one, you know, type of device, but I don't. I gotta adapt that a little bit. Maybe this. I'm gonna have to grab an adapter. Where are my adapters? I may have some right here. I've got my box of adapters and some other cables in here in my room. It usually stays in the garage. But uh, I think I, I was messing with a bunch of stuff the other last week. I don't know if I have that kind of adapter right here. I have quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter, or I always call, still call it eighth inch. But uh, I believe I do have one. Let me reach back here and get my cable. I don't, I'm pretty sure I plugged it into the mixer and it didn't work, but now I can't remember for sure. But let me grab my cable box. I'm coming back. <clears throat> That's the thing I need to do is fix these wheels on this chair. So, well, I need a new base. The wood, it's wore out. You can't fix. It's plastic, so I don't really know of any. I can't see any good way to fix it. I actually have a aluminum base out there that's got one of the wheels broke. If I fix it, it'll be, be all right. It's actually for the same brand model size of chair. Anyway, uh. this now well, let's just leave it yeah let's put it in here oh no if I'm going to just be doing tests that won't work too good okay so I need to go go from uh, 3.5 millimeter oh that's right I don't think it'll work because okay this is not TRS it's TRRS TRRS yeah I don't have an adapter I think I tried it anyway just to see if it would pick up the signal but uh, phones are completely different they have because they are actually so that their their connectors, their 3.5 millimeter female connectors are made for input and output. They want mic in and ear, earphones out. That's why they're TRRS. So I don't. I might have something that goes from big to little or little to big, but I don't have anything that that's a TRRS. Yeah, there's one right there. There's another one. Yeah. Oh yeah, my earphones has got one on it, a real nice one. There's another one. I know some of these are not very good at all, so I was trying to see which ones are the best ones. So, 
I don't know what would be, you know, most likely to work. Oh, yeah, I think I do remember this. That one doesn't even want to go on there. Maybe just that one. That one will go on there. I'm going to try it without any. Just to the. We can get. <coughs> I, d I just forgot that you can't see what I'm doing down there. So, what I'm doing now is I went ahead and took off the long adapter because uh, this one's the only one, uh, one that works with my phone, but I think this is considered the more normal. It's still a TRRS, so you might not want to plug it in on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and undo my cable. It's kind of tied up to the one a little bit. Now it doesn't need to be any shorter. Okay, <coughs> I'm gonna gain that just about how much I would for the. Okay, now I didn't plug it in all the way. Well, let's. Uh, I'll just. Turn that down. Let's see. Well, that's going to hurt my ears if it works. What I'm doing is I'm plugging it in a little at a time to see if it has a click, you know, spot there to make it work. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. turn my main mic down so that I can don't have to turn it up loud to hear it. Okay, that didn't work. Where's that silver one? Let's see. Okay, now let's do that again. No, 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 gonna work. <coughs> okay, so now we can get any signal whatsoever. It's just not, <coughs> I mean, if your pins would line up to just the right two, uh, you, you know, this is a, this is really for stereo, you know, this is a TRS, but it's really for stereo. TRS is tip ring sleeve. It's a balanced signal. It's different from a stereo signal. It's not even anywhere close to the same thing. Uh, TRS is a still a mono signal, but it's a balanced signal going through those three wires. You know, instead of an unbalanced, which would just be TS. You know, uh, tip tip sleeve. Tip ring sleeve is TRS, and then tip. Oh yeah. Tip sleeve, TS, and the tip ring sleeve, TRS. So, um, yeah, this works on my phone, which is what I bought it for. So that's good. Oop, I didn't want to move that thing out. Just a little windscreen plugs popping off this thing. It's actually a pretty darn good mic for ten bucks. Um, where's the little adapter? Oh, I think I. 
cable's pretty small, and I'm trying to be careful with it, but it does get yanked. And it hasn't got broke yet. But this is a common, commonly used for like for head headphones that go from 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch to a quarter inch, which is what I'm using on my headset right now. <coughs> Put this back in its normal configuration here. But yeah, you really wouldn't want to be letting that hang out in the breeze. You'd break your your connector on your phone in a heartbeat. So uh, just so happened I was lucky enough that when I bought it, that uh, I had already had this for my. I don't really use that VR headset. It's called. It's a VR headset as a brand. I don't really use it, <coughs> so uh, that's just was fine for me to do that with it, you know. My little fanny pack is dusty from sitting up there. This house is the dustiest house in the world. I really think we have something wrong in our ducks where we're. I've been up there several times over the years. I can't even really get up there hardly anymore. But uh, in the attic, <coughs> trying to find out if one of the uh, one of the ducks have come loose. One of them actually did come loose, and it was like three three inches separated by like three inches. And so the last two bedrooms here were just kind of getting air blown at them. And it was that way for about a year before I discovered it, and I hooked it back up and everything. And uh, then I got—I did check uh, because I kept suspecting. I still think that that's the only way that all this we get so much dust. I think it's being pulled in from the attic, but I can't find any other breaks in the insulation. But I mean, it could be broken inside the insulation, but and it's just pulling dust, pulling insulation mostly in there and blowing it out. But we get regular dust. I had decided it was our uh, plenum. Uh, that's what I had decided, and uh, I don't know, maybe two years ago now, we got a new whole new uh, inside and outside unit, and uh, the plenum was reworked, and as far as I know, you know, any problems that would have been there have been corrected, and it still have all that dust, <coughs> so I don't know why I'm even talking about that, but let's see, <coughs> I always wonder about where to put these things, I have a few I keep in the house, uh, and uh, because, you know, you don't always feel like going out in the garage to get stuff. I think I will put that one. There's two more in that kit. I'll put it in here in this little plastic container. But sometimes I forget that they're there. And I'll go out there and get that thing. Can't find them. And then I'll, oh, crap, where are they? And then I'll, oh, yeah, I've got some here in the house. But when I remember them, they save me a lot of trouble. Everything's falling apart down there, falling around, I mean, down there. My little shelf under there. Okay, uh, get that off my head. I've had all that I can stand. Hearing myself talk with echo and, well, not echo. It, it sort of sounds like echo when I listen to it, but it doesn't. It's kind of, I don't, um, I don't know how I can describe it. I guess if I listen to it. <coughs> How would I describe that? I keeps getting hung. Okay, let's listen to myself again. Hello, chick. Well, yeah. It's It does, actually, the way it sounds to me coming, just listen to the signal straight off the VM, well, coming from the VM to the mixer back to me. It sounds not really reverb. Well, it's almost like reverb that's quilched. <laughs> I guess that's kind of what it is. Um, but it depends on where I am, too, to the mic. It almost has like a in-a-barrel effect sound, which is, you know, it'd be a reverb down in a barrel sound. But something's uh, <coughs> gone strange with my... Oh, it did move. My mic moved. Uh, I, I was getting... So I can... T I'm tapped. I can't really hear that. Maybe a little. 
yeah, but you probably hear that. But if I tap, when I type or when I tap on the, you know, bump the uh, keyboard tray or the desk or anything, it's just super loud. It's radiating through my, and when I turn on the computer in my rack over there, you can't see it right now, but I have a big rack with computers in it. You would hear the rattling of the hard drive through the mic. It would just transfer through the mic stand because I have it, I have it mounted on the rack, and then I have it setting on the desk. But I put some padding on there. Speaking of air conditioning, it's air conditioning uh, Freon tube uh, foam that you put on them. Uh, you can you put on water pipes too. You tell kind of help keep them from freezing, but <coughs> but anyway, I put another piece on the end because where the end was touching the. I have it set up, kind of wedges under a little bracket that's on the uh, rack. And uh, anyway, it was making a really bad noise one day because I had another computer down there. So I finally thought, okay, I'll put some more padding on there. So that helps, but it's also, I need to zip tie that on there real tight because I really do. It's not on there tight, and it uh, it's, uh, it's moving around, and it's letting it, it was letting my mic drop drop like about three inches so anyway <coughs> um i have gone on and on and on with this hour and 26 minutes there's my time right there okay <coughs> i don't know now if i want to upload it it'll take forever i should i probably should have just made a live video out of it I just didn't know. I just thought, well, this probably won't be a real video, you know. And I definitely didn't think I'd start jabbering and talking and telling stories. But anyway, um, there's my tests. That's I'm glad I did that because now I know exactly what I got and what I don't got, what works and what doesn't work. All the things I've been thinking about and wondering if that would work. Like I, I knew I tested the phone and did and it didn't work, but. I was pretty sure. Now I know for sure. Of course, I guess I should write it down or something. I'll, a few months from now, I'll forget again. But uh, And those two mics that are messed up, I'm not going to put them back in that mic case. I'll put them somewhere else. Then I won't be able to find them, I'm afraid. But I have a, a box of electrical wire. Well, electrical wiring sound uh, box out there where I, I keep spare wire that's not you know wired up to anything good wire but and and uh, well i got scraps in there too and i have broken electronic things that i want to fix one day you know like mics and stuff and, and just need a new cable you know the mic's fine but it needs a new cable so i can maybe uh, if they'll fit in there maybe i'll stick it in the bottom of that okay um yeah that's good enough all right it's done, and uh, there's my mics. That's how, that's what I got in the way of mics now. Okay, all right, bye bye.